Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the PokeBeach.com podcast. I am John. I go by Water Pokemon mm. Master on the website, and I am joined by both Iroh the Cat and Justin Basil <laughs> from JustinBasil.com. And um, you might see some guest appearances by Iroh in the background, but um, <clears throat> and my kitty is running around in the background, too. His name is just Kitty. Um, all right, let's get into this week's news. Uh, felt like... Here. I felt like it started off slow. I think there was a lot more of it this week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what should we start with? I think it even goes on to the second page. Uh, there's just a lot. All right. I'll just start with. We're going to. I'll start. With, let's start with the basic stuff. All right. I'm going to start with Ultra Pro is releasing a nostalgic Pokemon TCG binder design. Now, I posted this on April Fool's, which <laughs> I mean, anything you post on April Fool's automatically goes under intense scrutiny. But. People thought mm. that this was a joke. And I'm like, why would I? How, first of all, how could I possibly mock up these images? And secondly, if I wanted to do an April Fool's joke about Ultra Pro, I would probably just like slap a slowpoke Ken Sugimori artwork on a sleeve on a basic background. And that would be like both the criticism of Ultra Pro's Pokemon products mm. and the joke. But anyway. Um, so no, this was not an April Fool's joke, but, um, okay. Anyway, Ultra Pro will be releasing a new, uh, premium snap binder this September. We don't know exactly when it will release or how much it'll cost, but it is a four pocket binder. And if you are a nineties Pokemon fan, like Justin Basil and I, you may recognize this binder design from the old binders that Nintendo released back in the day with also a, um, snap on, uh, latch thing. So I actually still have these somewhere, although I haven't seen them in a while. But um, there's only going to be one released so far. It's uh, this one in blue. So maybe they'll release more in the future. But I think this is a really cool binder. And I am actually going to try to pick this up. See, to me, it feels very basic. I know people are excited about it, but I'm like, it doesn't even have the Pokemon on it anymore. Like, mm -hmm. Because if it did, you guys would just criticize it anyway. This way, it's immune. It's well, at like, least if they did what if, own it, on, if they did, you can put your own sticker. Okay, on Okay, but it. at least if they did like the Pikachu, the Charmander, the Bulbasaur, the, the like that would be a throwback. Like they could at least get away with it that way, right? Oh, no, you got you guys would still hate on it. You at least this <laughs> at least this way you can like slap stickers on it. Like I've got a bunch of stickers that I would love to put on this thing. But that's just my opinion. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I'm glad it exists for people who want it. Do you still have these? Did which ones did you have back in the? Day? I never had those. Oh, you up. didn't. Oh, okay. Do you recognize mm -hmm. them though? Right? No, my. Oh, I recognize them. My friend, several of my friends had them. I just never had them. Mm. All right, and then our. Uh, what should our next story be? Should we start going through Mask of Change cards, or should we save that for the end? Let's. Let's see. Yeah, let's tie those all together at the end. Okay, then the next story would be okay uh basic story but the world's 24 2024 dates are going to be announced uh mm -hmm. this weekend at the europe international championships uh it should be announced sunday morning of california time um <clears throat> during the euic's closing ceremonies for some reason this year they're announcing the dates very late we don't know why they yeah. are waiting so long this time um there was some controversy when TPCI announced that Honolulu was going to be the world's 2024 location because they announced it during last year's Worlds in August, which is when the Maui wildfires were happening. And actually, funny thing, I was at Worlds um, when they announced that it would be in Honolulu, but um, I had been in Japan for maybe two weeks at that point, and I didn't even hear about those wildfires because I was so disconnected from news happening in the States. But um, that announcement that they made got a lot of criticism. So I don't know if that had something to do with it, with why this is so late. I don't know if they just wanted to tie it to EUIC to because um, in Japan, they have their um, tournaments now that are streamed all the time. And that's where they make big announcements like card reveals. So maybe they're trying to emulate that and have the date be announced there because it's a big tournament. I don't know. But uh, it feels it feels late honestly mm -hmm. people need to make plans months and months ahead of time for stuff like this mm -hmm. it feels too late it it should have been announced three four months ago probably well i i i checked that um 
I think the last few years it has been announced at the beginning of March. So we're only like a month late, but you know, it's still not, I mean. Yeah, but that's still a whole month yeah. too late. Like, yeah, I agree. I think, yeah, I think even early March is too late to have world's actual world states. It's not like they don't know. They do know. Who knows? Maybe something. So happened. I don't know. Um, okay. Oh yeah. That would be even better. It's like, Oh yeah. By the way, it's not even going to be in Honolulu anymore. They won't do that, obviously, but that would be that would be rubbing salt in every wound ever. That, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna try to go, but um, it's a little hard because I would have preferred to have made the plans further out uh, than this to get cheaper prices and everything. But exactly, and that's the problem. Is a lot of people I, are trying I, to do this on a budget. And it's I, very hard to do this. And this close. Some of my friends have also already made summer plans for us for what we're doing this summer. Um, so it's a little, little, uh, I don't know. I feel like when spring break comes around, people start to make their summer plans. So, um, yeah, anyway. All right. Yeah. What's our next story? Um, let's talk about uh, paradise dragona. Oh, okay. So there's a new set trademark or a new trademark has mm -hmm. come out from Nintendo creatures and game freak for paradise dragona. Uh, it's under the same terms as trademarks they've used for set names in the past, so it will 99% be a set. Um, based on the name, Paradise Dragona, it should obviously feature dragon-type Pokemon. Um, not to mention, it's currently the Year of the Dragon, so perhaps we'll see a Hydrapple EX, since its pre-evolution Diplin was in Crimson Haze without Hydrapple. And uh, Dural Duraludon's evolution, uh, Arch Arch Archaludon. How do you say that? Archaludon. I say Archaludon, but we don't, I don't think we have an official pronunciation yet. Yeah, that might be an EX in the set too. Uh, we'll see, and then maybe we'll get like Rayquaza. Maybe we'll get Reshiram, Zekrom. Um, I don't know. Latios, Latios. Uh, so this is. The only future set release that we currently know about, aside from Night Wanderer releasing on June 8th and Stellar Miracle releasing on July 19th. So this could maybe come out in like September or October. Uh, we'll see. But Night Wanderer on June 8th is going to feature the Loyal 3 as Pokemon EX. That's Okie Dokie, Monkey Dory, Fezendipity should be EX cards. And then we might also get Petrarunt in that set. I don't know, or they'll dedicate a set to it in the future, but I feel like that would be the set to have Petra Runt. So let's see. Okay, so Mask of Change and Crimson Haze is temp is uh, Twilight Masquerade. Mm -hmm. So Night Wanderer, Stellar Miracle would be Scarlet Violet Seven, which means this Dragona set would be the first part of our November set, most likely. I was also thinking this could be a special set. <laughs> yeah, I could see that too. Because if it's, that's also true. Um. They might combine. I feel like we're already seeing signs that they're getting that they're making cards for that special set, whatever their annual year. The end set will be for Japan. Um, <clears throat> we have the Palafini X alternate art already that we'll talk about later in the podcast. Um, we have the Battle Academy Japanese cards that uh, are releasing in English, some of them, but m most of them are not. So that could be bulk for a special set later this year. And then they could turn this into, I mean, the, what was it? Dragon Majesty? That was a special set, wasn't it? Or what was it? Uh, no, in no, the was... States, yeah, or internationally, yes, it was. But Japan, for yeah. Japan, it was just a regular set that we got way later. Was that the first Dragon set we got? Did we get two or was that the one? I'm having trouble remembering. I remember I posted that when I was on. You're talking about Dragons Exalted yeah. or oh, Dragon Vault? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've had several Dragon theme sets. I know, I can't. It's so hard to remember, like. I even remember posting one of them when I just arrived at Palm Springs on vacation one time with my friends. So that's how I remember that set. That was back in like, ooh, what was that era? Was that X and Y era? I don't remember. But yeah, what are what are the dragon sets we've gotten? Jog my memory. Dragon's Majesty. Dragon. Dragon Exalted. Vault. Dragon Majesty. Dragon Dragon's Vault. Exalted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like I have. To we've had we've had quite a number of them for I mean for a specific type at least. But you know, See, this Dragon, is what, I mean, Dragon's Exalted was the first one, right? For I don't remember. at least in current expanded. I have to look, but I'm I'm not good at. We've talked about this before. I'm not good at like 
memory recall on my feet. Like I have to sit down and think about it and like write things out to remember things. I'm just so bad at on the fly, things like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, but, um, what was I going to say? Uh, special sets. I was going to say something about special sets. Oh, what I was going to say was that, um, so we always start out a new era kind of boring because a new era always introduces just the Pokemon, the new Pokemon of that generation. And that's the appeal of the new era. But then they start to, to keep the hype up. They start introducing, um, new mechanics like stellar, like we're going to get later this year. And then dragon Pokemon have been sort of a special thing in the trading card game now. So this is because it's also the year of the dragon. Maybe this could be, um, a special set for us. Um, Oh, why did my lights go on? Uh, hold on. How do I turn these lights off while I'm in the middle of a podcast? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think that's all I had to say about this story. Uh, is there anything else you want to say? Not especially. I just, I kind of hope that it's not a special set and then it becomes part of our November set. Mostly just because it's a really oddball kind of thing to have for a special set. I don't so, know. Dragon like, I know dragons are like chase. Like people like dragons and stuff, but like, is that really what people are chasing now? I, I don't know that it is. What is, what would they're they chasing think? Eevee? They're chasing the starters They're chasing not really dragons specifically. Well, maybe it's time. <laughs> like dragon, dragon majesty was not well received. Um, which one was that again? Was that with the baby dragons? What was Dragon Majesty was, was uh, Sun and Moon. God, I have to go back and look. <laughs> so many. This is this is one of the problems of being uh, being involved for so many years is that everything starts to blend together. <laughs> At least in my head, I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm <clears throat> just have bad memory. Um. All right. Should we move on to our next story? Sure, let's talk about our Palafin box. So we will be getting a Palafin EX box on June 21st for the usual price of $21.99. It'll be configured like most EX boxes, coming with a Palafin EX promo card, a jumbo version, a hollow Finizen, Finizen and Palafin, which will presumably be Cosmos Prince slash Galaxy, four booster packs and a code card. So this was the first when this story dropped, this was the first time we had seen these uh, this Finison, this Palafin and this Palafin EX. These were brand new reveals that hadn't even been seen in Japan yet. But now we know that all of these are coming out in um, Mask of Change, which, Mask we'll of get, Change. which we'll get to next. Although the Palafin EX in this box is an alternate art version of the one that'll be in Mask of Change. So this could come from um, their future Our Japanese, end of year set. yeah the annual end of the year japanese set so um we'll get to sh let me jump to those cards in since we have the actual translations now because they were revealed last night let me jump to those cards in our mask of change story so this um palafin x was actually getting a lot of attention do you want to go tell me how you want to talk about these Sure. Let's talk first about the regular Palafin because I think that matters in the conversation quite a bit. Yeah. So the regular Palafin has the ability zero to hero. Once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from the active spot to the bench, you may search your deck for a Palafin EX and switch it with this Pokemon. Then you attach cards, damage counters, special conditions, turns in play, and any other effects remain on the new Pokemon. If you switched a Pokemon in this way, shuffle this, po or shuffle this card into your deck. So this is a very uh, odd wording because of just things. Um, it actually, I had problems matching up with the wording on the official card that's cut off. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it looks like Jake didn't quite get the same exact wording either as what the card says. This is the effect, at least, but the wording may be slightly off. Just, just for this of one part. Not having it. But, ba but basically, yeah, it's a little weird how they've worded it in English mm -hmm. officially. But we can, again, we don't see this we full card. But this is the effect. It's cut off in the so you're swapping, image, so we can't see the we can't see the full effect in the the full English text in the product image because it's cut off. So this is yeah. what the Japanese effect says. We're going off the translation here. Yeah. So we're you're going to basically be swapping the Palafin for the Palafin EX from your deck. As long as you're taking that Palafin, again, 100 HP Water Pokemon Stage One, awesome Finison. As long as you're taking that Pokemon, moving it to the bench from the active spot, 
Uh, it'll trigger zero to hero. It means you get your palafin out and uh, you put him down and put this guy back in your deck. And this is the only way. Which is crazy because it's the only way palafin EX, palafin EX is a stage one water type Pokemon. It is lightning weak for the record. It has 340 HP as a stage one Pokemon. First of all, that is a lot. That is that is literally the current cap in the TCG base HP on a stage one, which is insanity. It has the ability Heroes Spirit. So put this Pokemon into play only with the effect of Palafin's zero to hero ability. And then it has for a single water energy Giga Impact does 250 damage during your next turn. This Pokemon can't attack. For a single water energy, you're doing 250 damage. That is absurd. Uh, you have uh, you have um, Prime Catcher to help get you in and out of the active spot as needed. Obviously, you're going to have access to stuff like switches and stuff, too. This is crazy. Um, I know there have been a lot of people like, well, you could you could you know find a way to turn off the ability and standard. Currently, I don't believe there is any sort of way that you could shut this ability off. And expanded stuff like Garbotoxin could shut the ability off because it affects your hand. Um, that would allow you to uh, just evolve straight from this Palafin into uh, or from Finizen. But as it stands with this ability, you have to use the effect of Zero to Hero to activate Palafin or this uh, get this Palafin EX into play. And in the games, <clears throat> Palafin, when it evolves from Finizen, looks exactly the same except for a heart on its chest. And then it can mm -hmm. transform into this like superhero dolphin. So that's the whole point is that it's looks kind of like a weak citizen, you know, like Finison. But when it evolves into Palafin, it can transform into the superhero form, which is much more powerful in the video games than its stats. I think all of its stats except for HP go up or something like that. So that's what it's a bulky boy. Yeah. What's the current? So you said this was the cap for a stage one. What's the overall cap? No, 340 is the current cap oh, overall. Oh, that's the oh. highest for any stage. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, that's that's it's already hit that I don't know, stage one, which is why it's wild. I wonder what that's what you would doing. expect on a stage two, a strong stage two. But so that's on a stage one. What do you so do you expect this is gonna be like a really big deal of a deck? I think it might be a decent deck. Uh, I'll testing play it. will matter, but it's it seems fun to me. Is it gonna be the thing is I think out? it's I think, well, it is. And I think I think part of the reason they're giving you so much HP is because it is effectively a stage two with how they have you get it out. Yeah. So that may be what hinders it. We'll see. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so that'll be the Palafini Xbox. We're, again, we're going to get it in English with alternate artwork. And yep. All right. Yeah, it's cool stuff. So Battle, Battle Academy time. Yeah. So Battle. Whoops. So. um Battle Academy 2024 was just revealed in English. Um, it's going to release on June 21st for $24.99. So with these product images, it's now been revealed that the three decks will be headlined by Pikachu EX, Dark Rai EX, and Armor Rouge EX, all of them coming from Japan's Battle Academy. And this also answers the mystery of those promos. Uh, what was it, two weeks ago? The product is going to feature promo cards in it, for the first time, um, they were listed on Pokemon.com two weeks ago. So Armor Rouge EX, Pikachu EX, the Ampharos line, Dark Rai EX, the King Gambit line, Picnicker, and Maridon are all going to be in the product. Um, so Pokemon.com lists all of those promos as being legal on April 26, which is in two weeks. But the product isn't coming out until June 21st. So maybe this means the product is going to release this weekend at EUIC somehow, or this is a mistake. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, <clears throat> this also means that with the release of these cards as promos, that there are still 37 cards from Japan's battle Academy that don't currently have English releases, um, including Greninja GX, Houndstone EX, Lucario EX, and Melmetal EX. So these could be thrown into a future set or our special set, you know that we may get in yeah. what the spring. or they could be future promos Which, too yeah they could be yeah yeah I, I i it's very interesting how they've done this i think with it being legal in two weeks there's something coming out some probably some league promo or like the new half decks or something it, it really strikes me as weird that they've let picnicker be a promo 
So it's yeah. got to be something specific that they need it for. Yeah, I don't know if they're just going to release it early or I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe they'll to me, it seems it, it seems like that might be the case because there's no way that there's enough enough unique cards that they would use for these to get away with just those for the promos for a full Battle Academy product. Wait, so but maybe that gap between say that again. So the cards that are in that promo list are they're not enough of them to fill out a full deck. Like that's oh, yeah, well, n- much less three of them. Well, I'm assuming that you mean you're saying that these th- what are the contents of these decks going to be if those are the only promos? Is that what you're saying? Well, that's what I'm saying is I don't think that's actually all of it. I think that's part of some other product and it's getting released ahead of Battle Academy. That's what I'm thinking. And then I don't know if you noticed, too, but there's a gap between Maridon oh, and the no, prior no. promo. Yeah, I said that in the la- it's two- it's almost what, 30 cards? Uh-huh. Like, oh, maybe? you're saying. Oh, oh, so you're saying. So it's going back to that theory from the other week that maybe these yeah, will if it's release 30, it looks like 34 cards and I'm doing. Yeah, 34 cards like that's that's 34 oh, to 37 wait, wait, right there. Wait, wait, what's 148? Oh, is that what you're saying? 148 minus 114 is 34. OK, yeah. So you're saying that maybe these will all be in Battle Academy, but these are just legal because they could they're be releasing ahead of it somehow in something. OK, I didn't very possibly. That. Yep. And think of that. Well, we don't know why or how or what, what in, but maybe we'll see. It's uh, I mean, nobody really wants these cards. I mean, these are for kids. Yeah. Nobody really wants. Well, they're, and they're, they're for collectors too. collectors will still want them too. like if, if you're a, a fan of Amphros, you'll want the Amphros. If you're a fan of Lucario, you'll want the Lucario. Well, and then, OK, people do want the Darkrai because the art is really good. I just wish the card didn't suck. Yeah, the Dark Rise art's good, but I don't I don't really like the Lucario. It's just like your. I mean, it's cool. It's it's, it's a bog standard. Yeah. CG yeah, style yeah, animation CG thing. Movies. Yeah. Like, look at this handsome. Like, it looks I mean, the CG. Like, yeah. what is this? It looks it's ugly. bad. It's, yeah, it's bad. Um. All right. So I guess we'll have a follow up with that once we know why those are being listed as legal. For sure. All right, and then uh, now the thing to make everyone jealous. What Professor Promo Energy Cards? So uh, now we're getting into the EUIC news stories, the Europe International Championships. So yep. professors who attended a professor seminar at the EUIC, there was only one professor seminar. Re- each received two exclusive promos. So each professor either got a Professor Sada's Vitality or Professor Turo scenario. Each reverse hollows with the Sword and Shield style. Um, line hollow foil. And I'm assuming it was the two of them together, not just one. No, or the they other. got one. No, they only got either. No, they only got one or the other. Half of the room got mm-hmm. Professor Sada's vitality. The other half got Professor Turo scenario. Making and, tough decisions about where you sat during the seminar. Well, I don't like. think the, I don't think the professors knew that when they were. So I don't think they knew. No, they probably were. not. But. So so everybody got one of those and then everybody else, all the professors who attended this professor se- seminar also got a random uh, hollow basic energy also with the professor program stamp. I don't know if I mentioned there's a professor program stamp on the two professor cards as well. Um, mm-hmm. These uh, hollow energy will also come together in a pack of eight for 20 points in the professor store later this year. So professors will be able to buy um <clears throat> all eight hollow basic energy with the professor program stamp in a pack um and then See, i'm excited for that because i have so many points that i haven't been able to spend on the professor store and i would not mind having play sets of all the energies yeah how many how many points do you have like how many do people usually accumulate i'm actually i was curious so i'm looking that up right now as we speak and while you're, men- give me and while just you're one moment. looking that up, I'll mention um, I wrote in the story that professor seminars at future events will likely give out these same promos. That's now been confirmed. I didn't update the story yet, but um, they said that this these will be given out over the next year at uh, tournaments where they do professor seminars. So so at the moment, I have two hundred and sixty five points. OK, so you can get like 16 packs, Thir- 13, I think. 13? I don't know math. <laughs> that's your, that's right. pretty good. Um, yeah, 13 play sets is or 13 sets of the energy. So 13 plays well, all the all the places of each of the energies. Do you like 13 having of each? Is a pretty good. professor program stamp on your cards? I mean, it's 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 nice. It's unique, right? Yeah. 
I don't I don't see hollow on the edges, which is a, a little upsetting. I kind of oh, would have rather had that. that. Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't even think. of Yeah, that. it's it looks like non hollow edges because the yeah. was it the 151 energies. They are hollow on the edge and those are by far the nicest looking ones. <laughs> so that's the only thing that might dissuade me from going hog wild on these. Oh, but no, I, didn't I do still like them. I didn't even notice that. Huh. Interesting. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, and then our second EUI story of this weekend, and there'll be a third one later this weekend once they announce the world's dates, but our second story is that mm -hmm. um, here's the competitor's packages that competitors received. You can see <laughs> ah, you can see here it's uh, you get a play mat, a nest ball promo uh, with the um, Europe uh championship stamp on it this is just a regular mirror holofoil reverse holofoil it's not like that cross stitched pattern that we've gotten on these um play pokemon years ago before. yeah it's just a regular yeah and then there's of course a staff version with the staff stamp um but yeah so the the competitors package you can see here has a uh, unique deck boxes and hats and featuring the um <coughs> future pokemon <coughs> Um, and then, sorry, allergies are really, it's, it's been really windy in SoCal the past no, couple of days. Um, yeah. And then we already went over the merchandise that they were give, selling at the Pokemon center. So yeah. So does that mean, so yeah, I, I mean, so I, stuff. I signed up, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, way. I signed up for the, um, the LA regional to be a spectator. So when I go, that means I can you're going to have like so much too. fun. I'm going to have merchandise like this too. Right. Uh, probably not quite nearly the same amount because the ICs are much bigger. Uh, uh but because the Pokemon Center doesn't generally go to regionals, they just go to the ICs. So for us, our North America International Championships. Oh, will be the one where that's we get right. Oh, oh, LA is oh LA is a regional. It's not international. Right. Oh, right, right. The international is the one in July, or June. I mean, June seventh. Yep. Oh, June, oh, yeah, yeah. That's oh, the one that, I got it mixed up. That's the one where you and I oh, need to actually yeah, meet yeah. so okay. that we can go. Okay, okay. Yeah. So this is okay. So this is like a states in the old days. The old terminology. This would be like a states, and then the one in June is like the nationals, but now it's internationals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so that's okay. Oh, I did not put two and two together. Cool. Um. All right. Uh. We'll just real quick. Oh, no, there was another EUIC story. Real quick, if you use code BURSTROAR, EUIC24, in PTCG Live, you'll receive a Raging Bolt Special Illustration Rare, as you can see here. Again, the code is BURST, as in explosion, BURSTROAR, EUIC24, all one word, and you can get your Raging Bolt Special Illustration Rare. Code will work until April 15th, and they will only give out 100,000 copies. I always find it funny that they say only 100,000 copies will be available. It's like, do you really think, are, are all of those really redeemed in PTCG Live? No. It's like they make it sound like, oh, there's so many people who are going to get it. You better act only now. Only 100,000. better act now. Um, mm -hmm. All right, and let me just double check. Uh, so we're going to go over the Mask of Change cards, obviously. And yep. is that it for the week? We had some Twilight Masquerade. English cards that were revealed, which show that there's going to be 226 cards in the set. Um, it's kind of a just a whatever story. You can look at. We had some English uh, card reveals, but we've seen them in Japanese already before. Talked about them before. Yeah. But um, okay, so let's get into. Was that it for the week? I'm checking. Da, da, da. Okay, so yeah, let's get into Mask of Change. So the first reveals of the week were a Phoebus and Melodic. Or Milotic, I guess I should say. God, it used to be melodic, okay. and now they call it Milotic. Ugh. The four kids anime. Milotic. They used to say melodic, I think, and now it's Milotic. Like, anyway. All right. Your turn. So, uh, <laughs> Milotic has the ability Serenity. Your, abil your opponent's Pokemon in play, and any cards attached to those Pokemon can't be put into your opponent's hand, which is pretty nice. That has a, again, that's a 120 HP stage one water Pokemon. So Serenity, your opponent's Pokemon in play, and any cards attached to those Pokemon cannot be put into your opponent's hand. So this is going to block things like Professor Turo scenario, like um, 
Penny, all those effects that pick something up. Sharon's care. It's going to basically prevent those effects from working. Which is uh, potentially useful. We'll see how that goes. What did you think? And then for the water double colorist. Oh, sorry. Eh, I could take it or leave it. I was going to say, what did you think of this art? I, I, like I said, I could take it or leave it. I don't, I'm not. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Uh, I didn't like it. It looks weird to me. Um, the, the thing is, just the angle, the Pokemon, the angle, like the background's really good, but the angle for the Pokemon's kind of weird. Well, I, I don't think that's on the I artist. Like, I think this is the Pokemon's design. Oh, I mean, I didn't like the art style of it. it looks weird, like these bubbles. No. Anyway, um, were you going to say Phoebus or? No, Phoebus is just bulk. It's it's something you evolve up into. It has the same I, all I was going to say is that you have the uh, the water level colors for Hydro Splash does 100, damage, 100 damage. 10 times damage counters. Could do 20 damage, basically. Ember magic. Anyway. It's 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 not good. It's what? It's Phoebus. It's not good. It's fine. Oh, we don't uh, talk about it. <laughs> all right. The Chandelure line. So Chandler is one of those Pokemon that uh, gets love, and I think it's warranted. Uh, Litwick has called for family, which is nice. You get to put another base Pokemon on the bench. Uh, Lampet is a stage one Pokemon. You don't really need to think about it. Uh, and then Chandler itself has the ability Inviting Light. Once during your turn, you may use this ability. Each player draws a card. So you're going to force your opponent to draw cards here. And then it has the attack Mind Ruler, which we last saw on Radiant Alakazam. It does 30 times damage instead of 20 like Radiant Alakazam does, but this does 30 damage for each card in your opponent's hand. So with Chandelure, you could theoretically force your opponent to draw four cards. Prior to that, you could play a card like Iono or Judge and force them to draw cards that way and just get them to like, you know, seven, eight cards in hand. You can do a decent amount of damage with that, 240 for, for one fire energy. What do you think of this Lampant art? I think it's fine. I wish I wish our image was better uh, as it, it is now. We have the sparkles is, from the video. It is blurry, though, like that. The actual artwork, because the rest of the image is clear. Oh, I know. But it's just like the, the way they did it in the video when they revealed it. They were like, here it is gone. Like, like the second the sparkles started rendering, they dropped the image out. It was very frustrating. I was going to say, I like this artwork. I like it's like. Anyway. All right. <clears throat> but yeah, it's fine. And then um, ba, 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 Alakazam line. Alakazam gets yeah, a, for, a, a a baby and for the first a, time in forever, and we're getting a Kadabra, our second Kadabra yeah, since another Kadabra one fifty one. All right. I love that Kadabra finally comes back, and they've celebrated it by giving it two bolt cards. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. <laughs> it has to catch up. So <laughs> Alak yeah, now they just need to put it in every set so that it can get lots of bulk. Alakazam has the attack Strange Hack, which says your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Move any number of damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon to their other Pokemon in any way you like. Oh. So this is very reminiscent of Tapu Lele. There was a promo Tapu Lele for a while. I saw a lot of play with counter energy where you can just rearrange the, the damage counters on your opponent's side of the board. Knock a bunch of stuff out at once after doing a bunch of spread damage. Theoretically, you could do the same here with Alkazam. And then for a single psychic energy, you have Psychic, which does 10 plus damage and 50 more damage for each energy card attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Strange Hack is also kind of a callback to base set Alakazam, moving the damage counters around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's cool. I'm trying to remember the last time we saw. I didn't like this art either. Strange Hack. I feel like I feel like we've had a Strange Hack recently. I didn't. Maybe like, not. I didn't like these artworks. No. Nope. Do you like these artworks? Uh, I don't mind the Alakazam. Mm. I really like the Abra. I love the Abra. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Abra is that's I love that they did something different with it. It's so pretty. Yeah, I love the Abra. The Katabra is fine. It's black for me. But I, I really like the I really like the Abra. And then we got Hassel revealed from Mask of Change. Uh, you can play this. So card. Hassel says, oh, sorry. I wanted to sorry, do sorry. Hassel has a supporter <laughs> card from support uh, Mask of Change. It says you can play this card only if any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your opponent's last turn. Look at the top eight cards of your deck and put three of them into your hand. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. So basically you're getting it's very similar to teammates, but you're only looking at the top eight cards. But in exchange, you're picking three of them instead of one. 
So you're limited in your selection of where you can pick, but you're picking three, which is pretty good, theoretically. I thought I saw people in the comments saying this wasn't good, but I kind of thought, I mean, I don't play, but I, I thought this so sounded good. It's very niche is what it is. If you're comparing it to something like teammates, yes, this is a bad card. Mm. It It's not good compared to teammates. Mm. But situationally, this could be very useful for a control deck, something that gets itself down to a very small deck size and then wants to just to cycle specific resources. This is a way that you could do that fairly reasonably, even without going all the way down to the bottom of your deck. And um, in the video games, uh, Hassler is uh, what was it? What did I write? He was he's an art teacher at the Academy uh, and he's also an Elite Four member and it's using the same artwork. The card is using the same artwork in the background here as that's in the video games uh, in his room. Yeah, it's quite fun. Yeah, I wonder if it's even the same person. Maybe that I don't know. Maybe this person was involved in the development of the games somehow. That's. Like they're using that artwork. So I don't know. Background yeah. work. Uh, all right. So that's Hassel. And then um, ba, 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 I'm looking, I'm looking. Okay. So then it's just the big story. All the cards. It's that were the, the reveals from this morning. Mask of change. We have several cards that all, share all the- a festival lead ability that lets them attack twice in one turn, including Diplin, Goldine, and Swirlix. Thwacky also has a uh, ability that syncs with that ability, but sorry, go ahead. No, you you were sorry, you were leading it in. Oh, so um, yeah, so go ahead. They're your turn now. All right, so Thwacky is the first one we're going to look at. It has the ability Boom Boom Drum. Once you can turn, if your active Pokemon has the Festival Lead ability, you may search your deck for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So on a stage one, you have Quick Search. So long as you have the festival lead ability in play at some somewhere in play, you just have a quick search every turn on a stage one, which is pretty good. It's really good, actually. All of this set, um, the artwork seems to be showing that there is a festival going on, which makes sense with uh, Ogre Pond's lore in the, you know, in that uh, Kitakami. So um, here's Thwacky, presumably in the middle of the festival, banging its drum. God, this Pokemon is so ugly. Thwacky, mm-hmm. don't you think it got that stage one vibe going on? I uh, sorry, I misspoke earlier. I said anywhere in play, it does have to be your active Pokemon yeah. that has the ability festival lead. Yeah. Your active Pokemon, but Thwacky can be anywhere and get your yeah, get your card. Bench. Multiple can be on your bench and draw like four cards, um, or search for four cards. I mean, the Rillaboom looked kind of bleh. Yeah. The yeah, the Rillaboom is not good. <laughs> we didn't talk about Rillaboom. Uh, we can talk about Diplin, though. Diplin is one of the Pokemon that has the ability Festival Lead. If Festival Grounds is in play, this Pokemon can use the attack, or it may use any attack it has twice. If the first attack knocks out your opponent's active Pokemon, you may attack again after your opponent chooses a new active Pokemon. And then it has the Do the Wave attack, which does 20 times damage. This attack does 20 damage for each of your bench Pokemon. So, so up to 100 with a normal size bench. So this festival lead is what's going to be on three of the cards. Um, mm-hmm. And you can only use this attack if or you can only use an attack twice if it's printed on the card. So you can't use it with right. a TM uh, attachment. Right. Specifically, it says the attack the Pokemon has, mm-hmm. not that it can use. So, yeah, you, yeah like you said, you can't use a TM. Mm-hmm. And then it's got the wiggly. OK, tough. Well, it's got the wiggly tough. Do the wave. <clears throat> do the way wait before you say anything look at this goldeen artwork just look at it it's just like this is the most it's very pretty tension goldeen's like ever gotten yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very pretty beautiful. card it's like a, i want to go to a uh japanese festival now but anyway right. all right so, so it has the festival ability to i'll spare you the reread but it also has the attack whirlpool for double colorless it does 10 damage and then you flip a coin and if it's heads you discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So you could theoretically get two opportunities to knock an energy off your opponent's active Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And only do theoretically damage. interesting. Yeah. And then the Sea King is just like the Rillaboom. Mm-hmm. Meh. There's not, nothing to write home about there. And then we already went, the Palafini X line is in this set. It's got different artwork than the one coming out in our promo box. We already went over Palafin. Mm-hmm. 
we do have a Swirlix. Swirlix once again has that festival ability and then an attack called Sneaky Placement. You put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So you could drop four damage counters on their side somehow. Mm -hmm. Make some Swirlix at this festival going on. The cotton candy in the background. I, I will say, while I do like Kalos, uh, I do not like Swirlix and I do not like Slurpuff. Oh no, I've never liked to them. me. But I like to me, they feel like Gen Five Pokemon. To me, I I don't like I don't like them because they're ugly food things with red eyes. Creepy. So, okay, in my opinion, is there like Pokemon that didn't even make the cut for Gen Five, and then when the Kalos decks was too small, they're like, crap. What can we salvage? <laughs> Let's, let's <laughs> throw in a cotton candy ball of cotton candy, the stick. Right. It. Um, but yeah, I was, I was more commenting on, I like that these cards are establishing an atmosphere. Like the theme of the set is establishing this festival atmosphere. This should have released in like July when they have those, what is it? Tan Tanabata festivals. The one with the, the like Jirachi is based on anyway. All right. Slurpuff. Dreepy. Dreepy. Oh, Slurpuff, Slurpuff is not good. Thing, no, <laughs> Slurpuff is not great. All right. It's the same, same story. It's not good. Dreepy. But we have GP. GP is good. GP is, is nice. It, its attacks are, are not worth talking about, but it evolves into Dracloak, <laughs> which is the best. Uh, this is the ability telling spirit on your end. Reconnaissance raid on mine. Once during your turn, you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand. Put the other card on the bottom of your deck. So m players that are a little less seasoned or have come to the game um, a little bit more recently will recognize this as airmail. So airmail was an ability on a Pidgey in Team Up that allowed you to do exactly the same thing. Uh, that Pidgey had was a common. It had 60 HP. Saw quite a bit of play in Pidgeotto Control. Very very good card. Uh, Dracloak again that same ability. Uh, if you're a little bit more seasoned, you might recognize this as the Poke Power from UXC Level X. Again, same effect. It's trade off. Look at two cards, put one on the bottom, put one in your hand. It's it's phenomenal. This, I'm so glad this ability is back in the game. Uh, it's on a 90 HP Pokemon, too. So that's really, really cool for alternate formats like uh, like three, four, five or or even something like um, Eternal, where you have access to a lot of Dragon Search. I'm. I'm very excited for Dracloak and for Dragapult EX. Dragapult EX is a 320 HP stage two Pokemon that evolves from Dracloak. For a single energy, it has the attack Jet Headbutt, which does 70 damage. And then for a fire energy and a psychic energy, it has Phantom Dive, which does 200 damage. And you're going to put two, six damage counters on your opponent's benched Pokemon in any way you like. Isn't this like. Kind of a remake of Dragapult V, I think. Dragapult V Max. Yeah, it's V Max. It's a spiritual reprint of Dragapult V Max. Dragapult V Max was a really cool deck for like one set, and then they immediately killed it off with Eternatus V Max. Mm -hmm. uh, especially early on in, in Sword and Shield sets, they were very, very guilty of very clearly, obviously, and, and obviously printing a deck, and then the very next set printing its counter. <laughs> and they did that for a long time and it was very painful. Um, I think it was because they were trying to make sure they didn't have another ADP kind of thing going on with ADP and Zacian, but ultimately they just kind of can, screwed up. Can you repeatedly. remember can you remember what you just can you remember that point for when we get to writing um uh, eventually I'm gonna write set pages and stuff, and that kind of that kind of thing would be interesting to include, like where you say, like, oh, despite introducing the Dragapult VMAX in the previous set, they already printed in this set a counter to it. And, you know, like the game design yeah. sort of points about it. That, that'd that be really interesting to look at. Um, yeah, Dragapult was very short lived, unfortunately. Really, really cool card, though. Dragapult VMAX was one of the few fair decks that existed in the Sword and Shield era. And it got stamped out pretty quick, unfortunately. And now we have the Festival Grounds that's been mentioned how many times? Festival Grounds has been mentioned three times already. Each Pokemon that has any energy attached can't be affected by special conditions. Remove any special conditions affecting those Pokemon. So there's a stadium card that basically is going to prevent you from uh, having any special conditions on you if you have an energy attached. Mm. And then the next 
card know. that you have on yours I don't like this uh, is waking wait wait I don't like this artwork. It, it's, made it so I actually different. don't like it either. It looks very lifeless. I hate to say yeah. that, but it does. It looks lifeless. They could have done so, something so pretty it, with like the... Like and a, like forgive a, me for saying this, but it genuinely looks almost like something an AI would cook up. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's weird. Like it doesn't look very good. I want to see like people eating like cotton candy and like pretty lights in the backgrounds and maybe Pokemon running around. Yeah. But what the... It's like, what did... <laughs> It's just like an empty. Like everybody wow. died. Just, yeah. Everyone died in their this tents this, and they're never coming they, out. They took this picture in the middle of COVID. <laughs> yeah, right. There's nobody. Nobody could go. <laughs> All right. Sorry. So the next the next item card here is for you, Waking Whistle. I called it Fable Flute. Mm -hmm. uh, reveal the top five cards of your opponent's deck and put any number of basic Pokemon you find there on your opponent's bench. Your opponent shuffles the other cards back into their deck. So, so this is pretty cool for control style decks. Um, we don't have Echoing Horn anymore, so this is kind of the closest thing we'd have to it, where you're basically trying to filter out the basic Pokemon from the top of your opponent's deck and throw them on the bench. We'll see how much play it sees. It's, it is kind of a, a will I, won't I be able to get what I want kind of card, which always does count against cards. But the effect is super strong because if you hit more more than one basic, your your opponent's probably going to want to scoop pretty quick. What was that base set trainer that let you put? What was that? The one that let you put uh, something on your bench, uh, one of their basic Pokemon on their bench. Do you remember? What was that? So I don't think it's base set. I actually think you might be talking about a gym card. And it's actually one I have right in front of me. America's Perfume. No, there was Eric's perfume. No, there was one in base set too, wasn't there? Like, uh, hold on. Wait, I'm just curious. You talking about a trainer card? I thought there was. I remember something. Uh, I might be misremembering. I don't know. Mm, 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 mm. Perfume comes from is from hand, but either way, it last last disrupts trainer cards. No, okay, it wasn't last. I guess I'm misremembering. Uh, yeah. Are you talking about Poke Flute? It might be Pokemon oh, Flute. Look at the yeah, text on it. Flute. Like nobody ever played that. I card. think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Because that's ever that's the same it. effect as Echoing Horn. Yeah. Choose that's the same effect as Echoing Horn, but it's not a Rapid Strike card. It was uh, choose one. Yeah, basic. I'd forgotten about that. Well, because nobody ever played that card. It's, it was very choose one basic Pokemon card. From your opponent's discard pile and put it onto their bench. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it's it's literally the same effect. Yeah. It's still an item. Well, today it's functioning an item card and unlimited in internal formats. But yeah, yeah, I've forgotten about the card. Yeah, it's it's there. It's it's exactly the same as Echoing Horn. It's just not a rapid strike card. Mm -hmm. All right. And, so, then, and then we have Legacy, Legacy Energy. Energy. Looks kind of pretty, actually. Uh, I don't know. The A spec energies are not doing it for me. No? They mm -hmm. feel Mm, no, they feel very samey already, and there's only two of them. So I don't know. All right. This effect, well, let's talk about this effect. <laughs> so this effect says as long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides every type of energy, but provides only one energy at a time. As long as this card is attached to a Pokemon. Sorry, once per I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read it off of mine because yeah, I don't like the way you're started. I'm sorry. Uh, once per game, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, your opponent takes one fewer prize card. So basically, it's very similar to Life Do, but it's a once per game effect that you get for that, mm -hmm. that prize reduction. It's super good. But, but it's not use, they, broken. They, like yeah, Life are they going to use this as their one and only A spec in their decks? I think it's a, I think there could certainly be decks that that want to take this route. Uh, which decks want this? That's a question mark because we already do have several very good A specs that are seeing quite a lot of play. Prime Catcher ob is the very obvious choice for most decks. Maximum Belt, even Heroes Cape, those are all really good candidates for some decks. So they they do all have to contend. Or this any other A spec has to contend with those. And we've also seen stuff like unfair stamp that's also going to be another card that these have to to deal with you know i just noticed there's no illustrator credited on it because i guess it's an energy so special energies generally don't have yeah. credit for we did in the old days. the artists 
We did in the old They used to, but they haven't in quite a while. Yeah. I think they stopped doing that. I want to say Sun and Moon, but it might have been earlier. I just didn't notice. Um, and then we also had the English version of the Diplin revealed today, mm -hmm. which you could see right here. We just read the we read yep. the text before, but um, literally right after we saw the card mm -hmm. in Pokemon's, Japanese. Pokemon's well, social media is uh, trying to reveal a couple. Of I do like time. I do like that they revealed the the dragon Applin because it has the the illustration rare. Mm -hmm. But then they revealed the grass Diplin because it's more interesting mm. than the dragon Diplin. It's I don't know. It's 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 funny to me. All right. So that's it for the week. Uh, I think that's that's it. Right. Yeah. So um, I started uh, trying to buy the base set cards that I need off of uh, the Internet. And I think like so I, I bought two of them off this like marketplace website but they keep them in a vault until you're ready to ship them. And I didn't realize that as I was checking out. So it's going to cost like even more money to ship it to my house, those cards. But um, yeah, it's stupid. And I was like talking to their customer service and they were not helpful. So I'm not going to use that website again. Um, but it looks like eBay is probably my best bet for. So like, I think I mentioned before, like, um, so I'm trying to fill up. I'm trying to replace my base set hollow collection because they're all scratched up. Yeah. Um, talked about it another week. And on eBay, you can get like a full set of the hollow cards that are like PSA nine for I think I said like five to seven grand or something like that. But it turns out it's actually much cheaper to buy them individually. So I think I'm going to do that now. Um, and I think the cost to get like all of base set PSA nine is about like three grand. So if I do that over the next couple of years, just like slowly buy them, I think uh, I'll be able to replace my whole collection. But it's kind of fun, actually, because you can like you can bid on it's like a video game. You can bid on like one card at a time and like be really invested in it. And um, so I'm I'm looking forward to doing Gotta that. Catch them all, huh? Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing it, though, because I have a Mewtwo here on my desk under the glass from base set. It's completely scratched up. But I just I love seeing that hollow pattern and it just takes and when I especially if I see them all together, I am just going to be transported back to the playground when I was like 10. So um, for me, it's like it's my dose of nostalgia. I'm a very nostalgic person. And um, so I'm I'm excited to 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 hopefully uh, get that set completed over the next few years. And then when I go to L.A. regionals, maybe they'll have maybe there'll be some vendors selling some for cheaper than on ebay who knows because the price is mm. actually i was looking the prices fluctuate kind of uh all over the place um it would be yeah. really difficult you, and i think you said that before too like even on tcg player and i think it would be really difficult for um for us to have any kind of automated system that tells how much those cards are worth because they they fluctuate like quite a bit but they're not that expensive either too which is nice because i only like the um unlimited versions i don't like shadowless or first edition and they printed so much of unlimited that like most of the cards are only a hundred dollars a pop except for like blastoise and charizard and maybe like venusaur but um they're they're not as expensive as i thought they would be which was good news for me especially since i don't have any attachment to those shadowless cards so We'll see. I will update you guys once I have a, you know, once I have a lot of them, maybe I'll post, I'll put them in a video or something. You'll have to get yourself one of those, uh, those binders that lets you put in, uh, the top loaders or the, the, oh, no, the slabs. no, I was going to cut them open and put them in a binder. Oh, you're going to pop them all open. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I only, I'm only getting them as PSA nine. Cause I want them to be, uh, in good condition, but I don't like, slabs or grading or whatever so i, oh, I don't either i want them to be in a binder because that's how they always were and that's how my cards are like i showed you the other week like i don't like i don't know maybe i'll think about maybe keeping them in the slabs for a while but i think my ultimate goal is to put them in the binder if because i think they'll they'll still be protected pretty well but again yeah, i'm maybe fixed all right huh They'd be protected all right. I would be most concerned about potentially damaging the card, taking it out of the slab. I know you can do it safely. Oh, I have, I have, do it all the time, I but. have a bunch of machinery. <laughs> I 
I have like saw yeah, blades and everything. I'll do a video of me like putting them on the um on the 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 saw table thing. I have my grandpa's from uh, the 80s like the saw machine thing you put it on the table and it just you put the saw thing down and it just I'll do a video of me breaking them all. I, I, I just can imagine you late at night with yeah. like glasses yeah. down here. You got a Dremel and you're just cutting off yeah. the top. I'll probably, I, I probably am going to do that. Um, Cause again, I'm an, I'm a nostalgia uh, person. I was going to say a bad word. I'm a nostalgia. I love nostalgia. So uh, I, I want to see them in a binder, not in these slabs. That's like that's like something the villain of the second Pokemon movie would totally do. Lawrence Lawrence the Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. It's like very much his, so. Yes, his collection on display in 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 cases he, for all to see. He needs to make the thumbnail. Actually, yeah. I one hundred percent agree with you. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's why I want my cards to be in a binder because that's what we did when we were little. Um, yeah. All right, so I think that's it for the week. Uh, I don't know what news we're going to get in the coming week. Let me look at my list real quick. Uh, oh, man, we're going to get the world's uh, date and venue. We're going to get more Mask of Change cards, uh, more Twilight Masquerade cards, probably English ones. Um, I think that's all I have that's coming up on my list. I don't think we're going to get any yeah. English products revealed next week. I definitely expect more reveals over the course of the next week. Probably another batch on Thursday, mm -hmm. if I had to guess. And then, and then the full set reveal is supposed to be the next week after that, right? Uh, when was it? <clears throat> it was uh, set comes out on twenty sixth. Six days before that would be the twentieth. Eighteenth would be so it'll it'll be not next not this coming week, but the week after. So in two weeks we'll have the full set reveal. And then the week after that, we'll have this, the yeah. secret cards, secret rares. Yeah, so not next week, the week after. Yeah, so we're, we're going to have it real quick here. Mm -hmm. It feels like we just started talking about this set. Now it's already almost here. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you all for listening or watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We love reading your comments, so please leave them. We read all of them. We appreciate all of them. What was that comment the other week about my shirt? Something about my shirt was weird. I don't know what people were saying. I was wearing like a... I, I don't know. I don't know that I saw that comment. I was wearing like a... I don't know. It was weird. Uh, but we, I, I love I love the random silly comments. I don't, I don't know what people are saying. No, I, I read I read all the ones from this last week too. Like, we do appreciate the comments, guys. Yeah. Please keep them coming. We love to read. Say, cause like, I know it seems weird, but we are people too. We like to actually get feedback. We like to hear what you like, what you didn't like. We... I mean, it's, no, we only like to hear what you like. We don't like to hear what you didn't. Like. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to tell us what you didn't like, be nice about it. But uh, don't be a Pokemon movie villain. I don't think most most people are pretty nice. I don't really see anybody. You know, usually on, on the Internet, if anybody's like really mean about something, that's more of a reflection on them, not you. It's like people I've. I've been on, again, I've been on the internet since I was, I don't know, nine or something. So I grew up, I grew up in the Pokemon fandom, the online fandom. And what I learned over the years is anytime somebody's like lashing out at you or doing mean things, it's usually a reflection on them. It's something in their life that is uh, something that they're lacking or they're miserable people or something. And they just want to take it out on other people. But it's I don't that, see that. It's that phrase, me. hurt people, hurt people, right? Oh, I, I've never heard that. Hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, okay. Well, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you all next week. Don't hurt people. Be good, nice people. Don't please smack bat, smack mean people, or tick, or tickle them. Pet, pet, pet a cat. It's fine. And if if you want a cat, yeah, it'll all be better. Go out in the world and leave the world better than you came into it. Don't don't. Don't be mean to people. Just uh, if it's a mean person that's out there, you can like tickle them or give them candy or Pokemon okay. cards. I'm going off the I'm rail. Rambling. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm really hungry right rambling. now and I, I want cookies. So I think I'm thinking about food. All right. All you're thinking about is cookies now. I love, I love food. <laughs> I love cookies. All right. We will see you all next week. Bye. Sorry for the randomness. Bye. <laughs> Bye.